Hi there, this is John from the freegiftfromgod.com podcast. I'm continuing to read the insights I found while seeking to understand what the scriptures say the true church of God should look like. All of this information comes from my free ebook titled The True Church of God, and it can be downloaded freely at the freegiftfromgod.com website. Today I'm looking at a chapter on the practice of having a clergy and a laity in the church. This will be covered over the next two weeks as there's too much to put into a single podcast. So this is the first part. So let me continue reading and I hope you find something of value in the insights that the Lord has given to me. Chapter 21, Lay and Clergy. Within many of the churches today, there is a division between the congregation and the leaders of the church. The leaders go to universities, colleges or Bible schools to receive degrees, diplomas or certificates in order to become ordained ministers of that particular church. In those churches who do follow such practices, it is often impossible to minister in the church as a teacher, preacher or pastor without having a qualification or accreditation from one of their schools. The problem with this situation is that it promotes divisions in the church. There is a separation between those who do the ministry and those who receive the ministry. It establishes a trained clergy and an untrained laity. This creates a church with two classes, a ruling class of clergy and the laity who are ruled. This should not be so. The church, when Jesus first established it, was established on the grounds of equality between the brethren. There was not to be a clergy who rule over the rest of the church because all of the members of the church, from the youngest to the oldest, from the newest convert to those who had been in the church for decades, are all equal. Consider these words of Jesus. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brethren. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew 23, verses 8 to 12. There are churches today who insist on calling those who are the clergy by such names as father, or pastor, or reverend, or apostle, and so on. They are given titles on the basis of their ordination and progression through the ranks of the clergy of that specific church. This creates a hierarchy of clergy formed with differing levels of seniority. Priests may become bishops, who may become archbishops in some of the churches. In the evangelical churches, we have seen some pastors become senior pastors, and even global pastors where the reach of the church extends across countries and nations. But what did Christ say about these things? You should call no person here on earth a master, a teacher, which includes pastor, or father. It's interesting also that even though we quite often hear Peter, Paul, John, and the others referred to as the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, or the Apostle John, nowhere in the New Testament are their names shown with the word Apostle in front of them. In the Scriptures, they are simply referred to as Peter, Paul, and John. Both Peter and Paul referred to themselves as being apostles, but in the sense that this was their job description. The Lord appointed them to the ministry of an apostle, but at no time was the word apostle used as a title or an honorific, and yet today we see people in the church frequently use honorifics and titles such as pastor, bishop, the right reverend, deacon, and many other such titles. These honorifics and titles have no place in the Christian church. Why? It is because we who are called to Jesus Christ are all equal. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. The use of titles and honorifics sets a division between the people of the Lord. No one is any better or worse than anyone else in the church. Consider also these scriptures. And an argument arose among them as to which of them was the greatest. But when Jesus perceived the thought of their hearts, he took a child and put him by his side. And he said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the one who is great. Luke chapter 9, verses 46 to 48. The early disciples of Jesus had arguments about who among them was the greatest. 
Jesus quickly shut down their arguments, showing that to be great in the Lord is to be like a child. Children are open and humble. They don't seek power or glory as men do. And as the previous scripture above shows, those who are great in the Lord are the ones who serve the Lord by serving his people. Jesus further expounds upon this point in this scripture. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For which is greater, one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at table? But I am among you as one who serves. Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 27. Once again, we see the disciples arguing over who was the greatest among them. And again, we see that Jesus had to shut down this line of argument. Jesus showed that among the people of the world, there are kings and lords who are benefactors. That is, they receive toll, tribute and adulation from the people who serve them. They are in places of power to rule over the people. But Jesus said in verse 26, But not so with you. The Christian church should not have rulers that lord it over the congregations in their charge. Instead, we see Jesus telling the disciples that those in positions of authority, as the disciples were to become, are called to serve and not to be served. Jesus made this point abundantly clear when he stated his own example. Jesus is the Son of God and had unlimited power to do anything. He was active with God the Father in the creation of the entire universe, as we see in the following scripture in John chapter 1, verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, it says, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6. But in spite of the power and glory Jesus had as the only Son of the Father, he emptied himself of all of his power and glory to come to earth, not to be served, but to serve, as Luke twenty two twenty seven stated. So if Jesus gave the disciples this example himself of what a Christian leader and teacher should be, one who serves, then we should think and act likewise. As he served, so should we. As he emptied himself of all power and glory, so should we. As he gave himself for others to help them and teach them, so should we. Jesus did not lord it over others, even though he was and is the Lord of lords and King of kings. While he was on earth, he was here to serve, and he often spoke of his disciples as his children, family, brothers, and friends. He did not tell them to establish a clergy and a laity, but to be brothers and sisters in Christ. No one is greater than any other, as we are all equal. And if anyone aspires to be great in the church, then they must serve, not be served. The true church does not have a clergy and a laity. It is a false structure and one that leads to divisions and separation rather than brotherhood. Now, you may be wondering why it is that it's happened or how this has happened. And I'm going to go into that in our next podcast. So that's all I have for this week. I hope you found it interesting and I hope you'll join me again next week as I continue looking at this aspect of the true church of God. Next week, I'm going to continue with part two of this chapter on the lay and the clergy. All of the information I'm covering here is contained in a free ebook titled The True Church of God that can be downloaded from the freegiftfromgod.com website. So until next week, this is John from the freegiftfromgod.com podcast signing off and hoping you have a blessed week ahead. God bless.